Uh, my name is Stefan Knutsson and I'm an analyst here at uh, ABG uh, covering Capacent. Uh, and uh, with me today I have Edvard Birkenheim, uh, CEO. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Edvard Birkenheim. I'm the CEO of Capacent Group and I'm here to present the company Capacent to you today. I'll just start off by, by briefly introducing where we come from, what we are doing then move on to, to the recent acquisition that we made that actually was closed yesterday, and then, then look ahead. Um, Kapacent is a Nordic consulting firm, and we offer both management consulting services, executive search, as well as interim services. And our mission is to be the change makers that, that make people and value grow. And uh, this is very important for us and I'd just like to highlight a few of, of the words in that mission statement. Change makers. I think we all sort of desire change as such. And many of us even know what we would like to change. And some of us know how to do it. And this is where change makers really stand out. We actually do it. And we do it with knowledge, perseverance, um, determination and creativity. And this is how we want to be as consultants. We make sure that change and improvements happen. Secondly, value and people. Uh, everything we do towards our customers and internally as well needs to be very closely linked to the value, to a value that we, we can prove, either in, in the form of, of a, a, a quantitative improvement in profitability or cash flow, or in a quant qualitative improvement in way of working or control. Both of these shall take our customer closer to their ultimate goal. And people, um, it's, it's part of our mission to make sure that our customers as well, the people in our customer organizations grow, learn more new things, start to work in different and a better way. And this goes as well for our own employees. That's the way we keep, keep the motivation and the creativity up. There's 180 of us today, spread out over five offices, Stockholm, Gothenburg, Malmö, Helsinki, and Reykjavik. And in addition to this, we have a, a wide network of associated consultants, namely here in, in, in Sweden, where we have initiated this uh, interim business. Um, so this is, this is really our, our business portfolio. We come from the management consulting side, and have expanded then to executive search and interim. And the whole idea here, of course, is to make us better change makers. We can drive now and support our customers in their transformations and improvement programs through consulting in terms of projects, through line, line assignments, through the interim business, and then we can find the right leaders as well, more permanently for our customers to the right position. These uh, different businesses have different, different profiles as well. I would say that, uh, um, I mean, the management consulting, which still is, is the bulk of our business, is, is growing moderately. There are some differences between the countries, definitely. Focus is shifting towards profitability there. Um, then we have Kappa Search, which, which was established a bit more than a year ago. Um, there we have good assignments ongoing, and we have, in general, uh, as approach to, to make these new ventures profitable in 12 months. That's, that's our target. We are slightly behind in Kappa Search, but, but I would say that we are in, in the big picture is on track. And the latest, latest offering addition is then the interim management services, which we established, started up really in, in June this year, and um, uh, this is a very interesting business. It has grown a lot the last years, and we think that we can take a significant position there. Uh, this is the long journey we've had ever since the start of the operations within the ABB group. And I would say that the, the journey is full of transformation, and that's, that's really our business, so I guess we need to do it on ourselves as well. We have changed names twice, we have changed ownership structure twice, we've made a lot of um, acquisitions, and, um, 
and ever since the, the listing, which was in October of uh, 15, we have had a very clear growth focus. Continued to do that both organically um, and as well through acquisitions. And we've established as well new businesses from, from new ventures, basically, from start, as mentioned, both with Kappa Search and with Capacify. And the latest news is that, that, the, that we acquired the business of RGP Nordics, um, which actually was closed yesterday, and I will come back to that one very soon. Mm, we have a long track of growth, and we have been profitable every year. Um, growth in itself is, it's an end in itself for us, in fact, because we, leave, we believe that a consulting company cannot be static. We must evolve, we must learn new things, we must acquire new competencies, and we have to be on top of things. And, uh, and not only does that motivate, of course, our employees, because they have the possibility to grow, uh, but it makes us a lot stronger towards our customers. And it, makes us, it, it enables us to take larger assignments and, and as well to, to, from a sort of investor perspective, to decrease the volatility in revenues and thereby as well in, in profitability. Now, just a few words on, on the acquisition of, of RGP Nordics, um, which uh, was signed two weeks ago and closed yesterday. Um, this was done through an asset deal where we acquired most of, of the assets of RGP Nordic, and namely customer contracts and, and employment contracts, and some other assets as well. We will take the whole cost of this, this transaction in Q3, and we have communicated that, that the cost will not uh, exceed 6.5 million kroners. And after that, we are in a, in, in a business as usual mode, and what we really want to achieve here is, is, is mainly four, four synergies that I'd like to lift up. First of all, we had this Capacify, which is basically a startup since June. And now suddenly we will get quite a big business, a significant business flowing into Capacify. So I would say that the startup phase was very short there. And now we are gradually becoming a, a significant player in that market as the main park, the bulk of the the, the revenue from RGP uh, came from the interim business. Secondly, the, the, the other part of the business came from own sort of management consulting with own consultants. And there the focus has very clearly been on the, on the finance side and the CFO agenda. Um, with services like finance transformation, post-merger integration, which is very interesting, and then robotics, basically process automation. And this will, will, will really complement our services on the finance side as well. And we will have a lot bigger team there, uh, a combined team. Very good news. Um, thirdly, uh, if you look at the customer base, um, we don't have too much overlap there, meaning that there is a lot of potential, of course, to, to deepen those relationships and, and sell, sell other services to same customers. And then finally, just... I'd like to, to raise the point that, that as we are taking over the, the sort of the business assets of that, that operation, we will get in basically more gross revenue without impacting on, on our fixed costs. So we therefore believe that it will have a significant impact on our EPS. And then we have as well estimated that the the top line will grow by 30 to 70 million. And yes, I have to admit, it's a very wide range. Uh, and I would say that uh, if, we, if we end up at 30, then we will not be, be happy at all. And if we end up at 70, then I think we have realized most of the, of the synergies. Um, we have different businesses and we have different, different pricing models as well. I would say that the most sort of classical uh, um, invoicing model or revenue model within consulting is hourly debiting. We have that as well, but uh, to a smaller extent um, every year. Uh, and, and the predominant um, pricing models 
especially within management consulting, is fixed price. It's either fixed price for a certain phase of a project or for a certain team for a month, for instance. Uh, or then it's a performance-based pricing model. And, and here I would just like to lift, lift that this, these have different impacts on our profitability. Let's take an example of a, a performance-based project, which typically is quite large, meaning that we will actually invoice only part of the, of the fees that we would invoice if we had a fixed price project. So the, the revenues are pretty back heavy and dependent on the outcome of that project. How well do we succeed together with our customer to reach a certain result, measurable result? Um, and traditionally, I think we have had a lot of those, um, both in, in, especially in Finland and, and as well in Sweden, these performance-based fees. And they can create some volatility in our, in our uh, revenues, but uh, we believe in them and we like to be in the same boat as our customers. There's a lot of talk about the war for talent, uh, and, and rightly so. Um, I think there are three ways for us to source new competence into the company. Either we recruit people directly from school and make them grow in the organization, or we recruit persons from the side, um, or then we make acquisitions. And I think we are using all of these three, three instruments to, to acquire new, new competence. Uh, the main one has been to grow internally from, from underneath, let's say. And we've worked many years with, with especially two talent programs towards the schools uh, and universities the analyst rotation program and the female talent program. And in fact, yesterday was a, was a big day because we had the, the closing of the, the acquisition, but we had as well the start of a new generation of analysts which come in every year. And uh, we had more than 10 analysts starting yesterday and gathering in, in Stockholm. Now, if we think about our figures, uh, I think we have, we have, as mentioned, had quite a strong focus on growth ever since we listed. Um, there, were a big, th there was a big transformation as such for us as a company as well, coming from a traditional partnership into a, a um, listed company. And um, uh, we could see that in, during 2016, but from then on we have grown steadily and intend to do so going forward as well, especially now with the RGP acquisition. Um, and uh, I mean, if we just think about the different businesses and the different countries, we have had um, great successes in Finland by om almost doubling the business very profitably. In Sweden, we've had a more difficult year than last year. Uh, I think the lack of the really big projects has been a challenge for us. Um, and and maybe, maybe the market has been a bit softer. Typically, our our competitors do it yourself. So the customers decide that, okay, we'll, we'll try ourselves before we, we take you in. And, um, and then sometimes they knock on our door and want us to come and help, and, but, but that, that depends on, on, on the case. And in Iceland, we've had, um, ever since we acquired the business in 2017, we managed to improve the performance of it up until uh, this year when there were some macroeconomical challenges, both by WOW being, being bankrupt and then other Icelandic challenges. But I think we are getting over it now. And the decision vacuum of, of you know, customers not deciding on whether to invest in a project or not is, is feels that it's soon behind us. And then we, of course, have Kappa Search, which is growing, and Capacify, which is growing. And especially now, as mentioned, through the acquisition. So we believe the curve will continue, the trend will continue upwards. Um, and the second part of it is, of course, profitability. And um, uh, I mean, as, as these, the red lines are 12 month trailing figures. That's how we typically tend to look at our, our business. Uh, we can see that, that, that profitability has improved since uh, the Q Q3 2017. However, we are not happy with these levels as such. I think we have delivered 
six to seven percent EBIT during the last two years, and um, we have ambitions that are clearly higher than that. Growth costs somewhat. We are investing heavily in cost, um, but we still have ambitions, as mentioned, that are higher than these profitability levels. And if we look at the, the earnings per share, it follows the, the, the last picture very clearly. And um, I think this is what, what m most of, of you investors look at. Now, if we look forward then, um, how do we want the future to, to look? Um, we have um, a clear growth strategy, as mentioned. We have set the target to double the company by 2022 and to reach a revenue of 500 million kroners. And um, I think the, the, the main success factors for doing so are listed here. I'll just briefly go through them. Um, we are a medium-sized consulting company, especially within management consulting. And in order for us to, to, to conquer and, and gain in the, competence, in the, the, the competition, <coughs> we want to be very good or best at certain areas, certain selected areas, and then leverage on that. We are market leaders in, in Sweden and Finland in working capital management, releasing capital from the operations, and soon as well within pricing services. And in Iceland, we are market leaders within strategy within the public sector. 50% of the business from Iceland comes from the public sector. Uh, as well as, as being market leader in, in executive search, in fact, in, in Iceland. So, we intend to continue leveraging on those sort of spearhead products. And then we come in and prove that we are a great partner to drive change and improvements. And then we, we build a relationship. Now that we, um, through the acquisition of RGP, I think our strength on the, on the CFO agenda is a lot better as well than it used to be. Secondly, um, we have our sort of new, new offerings uh, Kappa Search and Capacify that we intend to expand to the other countries, to Finland, both of them. And in Iceland, as mentioned, we are already market leaders on the search side, but, but the interim side is not a big market there either. And we continuously evaluate new possibilities to add, add other services that would make us even more relevant to, for, for our customers. Technological capabilities, that's a very important point and goes hand in hand with, with really innovation in general. And there we have, uh, we have actually uh, gotten two new, two new persons into a board that will really help, help to drive both technology and innovation. So we start the, that, that development from the top ourselves. And um, this could be everything from being even better at robotics, which we are now in, with the RGP acquisition, or technological partnerships in our deliveries. Uh, we have said that we want to expand to at least one new country, and then finally we continue to work with getting the right persons on board to, to the Capacent family. Now, the share price is here, um, and, and if we recall the, the APS picture two slides back, it looks pretty much alike, in fact. They look pretty much alike. And um, I think it's just a proof that, that investors really look at, at EPS in our case. Um, not too much else on that one. And then finally, I would just like to summarize why we believe that, that you investors should invest in Capacent. I think we, our business offering is quite unique coming from the management consulting side and um, expanding into search and, and uh, interim. Um, I think we are now growing both organically and through acquisitions, and we have a platform now for doing so. So we will get leverage on our fixed cost there. Um, our, well, we are in a service business, so cash flow, it, it's a cash flow business basically, and we believe that consulting companies should not be sitting on a big pile of money. So we pay out our profits basically yearly, unless we have a very good investment opportunity or some short-term working capital needs. Um, we have a track record in acquisitions. We've done quite a lot of them. 
and we believe that we have learned from each and every and become better and better and, 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 and in integrating the new businesses into our own operations and, and realizing the synergies. And then finally, one point that I would like to mention is the, the incentive program for key persons that we have redesigned and, and, and mentioned that in our quarterly report in Q2, where we previously had a, a, a profit share um, approach where key persons where we would allocate up to 20% of our EBITDA as a haircut and, and, uh, and allocate it to our key persons. Now we have changed it around to make it really based on the value creation. How much value can we create in Capacent? Additional value, meaning that it will become an option-based program and, and the more value we can create, the more Capacent can grow in terms of value, the more our key persons will will get. So, but this will have a positive effect on our profit as well. That's it. Thank you, Edward. Thank you. Uh, some questions. Uh, sure. You're now active within executive search and interim management yeah. uh, on top of the consulting business. Uh, are you happy with the current palette or do you want to broaden it even further? We are definitely evaluating to, to broaden it further, yes but we can see clear synergies in these. Um, let me take an example. We have a case currently where a, a company was, is doing quite badly financially and the, the CEO was let go and we could quickly come up, come in with, a, with an interim CEO who's now working there and doing a turnaround. And he needed, he needed persons to help him do that turnaround. So we have three consultants in there and we have as well been discussing to help out with the recruitment of the permanent CEO. So I think we'll just stabilize this, this offering now and realize the synergies, but at the same time, if we, f if we come up with something new, we'll, we'll use the opportunity. Okay, and in conjunction with this, you also divested individuals uh, yes. in, in the summer. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that and why it was yes. divested? Individuals uh, was actually our first sort of um, venture around two years ago, um, where, we, uh, where we built a, a, an operation based on associated consultants, especially on the business intelligence side. And, and we had thoughts um, or expectations that it would grow extremely quickly. But it wasn't necessarily as, as sort of scalable as we thought. And um, therefore, we needed to change a bit the business model. And then we concluded together with the, with the persons running that business, that it's better that they, that they go their own way. And, and so it was quite, uh, n not, not dramatic at all, but it was divested then in the beginning of the year. Okay. Uh, and if we look at the profitability, uh, it differs a bit between your different regions mm -hmm. where Finland has performed uh, a bit better than Sweden and Iceland. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us uh, why this is the case and uh, how you can uh, uh, expand on this in the future? I think the different countries are, are they are quite different. Uh, Finland and Sweden is probably the most similar ones in terms of offering. Uh, it is more focused in Finland and, um, uh, and Finland has performed extremely well uh, with many large projects and that's typically the main big driver for our profitability. Uh, Sweden has been developing as well pretty well. I think the lack of very lo good big transformation projects can be seen, especially this year. Uh, and, um, and in Iceland, ever since the, the change in macroeconomics in the beginning of the year, we um, initiated a profitability program that will be seen in, from Q3 onwards. So we believe that, that it will gradually start to improve. Okay, uh, and lastly, you mentioned that you are uh, looking to expand into at least uh, one new country. Yes. Uh, what might be of uh, interest here? Well, I think there are still still empty spots in the Nordics as such, so those are of course candidates for sure. But uh, let's not close out any other candidates either in 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 Europe. Okay, and by that, I would like to thank you, Edward, with a warm round of applause. Thank you.